not really the strongest season for you to enter the new year. This word will come to pass in your life. Amen. Amen. This will be a prophetic word. But I pray that you will hold on to it. Because the doors that are closed are the very doors that God is going to open for you. You need to know times and seasons. And the time and season that you will choose to abide by the word. You will see the very doors. God will open and if he will not open those doors, he will open a bigger door for you. Amen. So let's turn to the word. Isaiah 45 verse 2. I will go before you, says the Lord, and make the crooked places straight. This is a word for each one of you. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Verse 3. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. This is a prophetic word that you will see come to pass. But I pray that you will be prepared to hear what you need to do. What are the things to know at the time when you are in the darkness? What are the things that you need to learn that the very darkness turns to be the very place that you will see the treasures hidden there and the secret places that you will see revealed as you, Revelation 3, 7. This is the word, the promise that God gives you that whoever has the key of David and the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things and he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth and the shut and no man openeth. This is the key. That you need to always remember that there is a key that has been given to you. And that key is only for those, Hebrews 4 verse 2, that will allow faith to get connected with God's word. Because the very word, if you are not putting faith with it, it will not profit you. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So every time you hear God's word, you have to hold on to that word. Because if you have the word of patience, Revelation 3 verse 8, what is the word of patience? You are patiently holding to that word till you see God moving. You're not struggling, you're not murmuring, you're not complaining, you're not allowing anything but the praise that comes forth because you know the Lord says, I know your works, and behold, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. If you are holding on to that word, you will be able to see the treasures. So in every trial, there is a treasure. In every trouble, you will always try because those very doors that are closed are the open doors. Because when doors close for you, you have a door that God opens. John 10 verse 9, Jesus says, You will never have closed doors in your life. Because when doors close around you, you always send an excess of an open door above. I am the door by me. If any man enter it, he shall be saved and shall go in, uh, in and out and find pastures. So you will never be in a position to have doors closed. But when doors close, there is a door that is above you that is open. Ephesians 2.18 What is the excess to that door? For through Christ, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. You have access through that door. So always remember the door that God opens for you, no man can 
shut it. But you need to have faith. When God gives you the word to stand in that faith, to allow God to move, and in that space of time, you instead of speaking about what is happening, you allow the door to be opened by the Spirit of God while you are praising God in the midst of it. So this is where you need to abide. Psalm 37 verse 23 and 24. Remember your steps are ordered by the Lord. You're never at any place at any time and God doesn't know what is happening in your life. The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. God delights in the way that you take as long as you are ordering your life in His ways. Verse 24. This is the key. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with His hand. You should be sure that in every circumstance, God's hand is holding you to stand with you. That in every circumstance, Psalm 66 verse 10. He is going to prove you. For thou, O Lord, hast proved us. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. When he holds your hand, he's not going to take you unless there is a treasure that is hidden. So when he's proving you, what is he doing? He's promoting you. In every proving that he is allowing you to go through, where you will see it, verse 11. Thou broughtest us into the net, thou laidst affliction upon our loins, verse 12. The key was, thou hast caused men to ride over our heads, we went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the place that God promotes you through his proving. Amen. Every time the distance between your proving and your promotion is praise. If you choose to give him praise, you have shortened the distance between your proving and your promotion. This is every time that whenever you allow Psalm 18, verse 28. In every darkness, there is going to be a light. For thou will light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Where is the candle? Romans 20 verse 27. The spirit of man. Don't look for the light outside. The light is inside of you. The Amen. spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. When you are allowing your spirit to dictate in that darkness, light will come. That's why hear not the noises around you, hear the still small voice that guides you. When you have the word inside of you, Mixed with faith, you will arise with light in the darkness. Matthew 5 verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. When it brings you to any kind of darkness, he wants to reveal His glory to you. So every time you will allow yourself not to be moved by the darkness, but to allow the light to shine, you will see the treasures in darkness. In every situation, Psalm 18 verse 29, By the I have run to a troop. By my God have I leaped over a wall. When will you do this? Verse 13. As for God, His way is perfect. How do you get to that way when He delights in your way? The word of the Lord is right. He is a rock 
butler to all those that trust in him. Make sure that word is there that you will be able to walk in his way, that you will run to a truth. You will leap over the wall. And this is every time you will see it come to pass in darkness, you will have your destiny that is greater than what you can ever have. So every opportunity that God brings you into a situation that closes, when there is a closed door, God is opening something in you that will reveal His glory in that closed door. So don't allow the closed doors to disappoint you. These are doors that you can thank God for because if He doesn't open that door, He is opening a bigger door in your life. So doors that are closed are meant to reveal His glory and He will open it. And if He not opens that door, he will open a new door for you and that very door will be much bigger than what you can have had from that closed door. Where will you see it? It will be seen Acts 16.23 This is Peter and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison charging the jailer to keep them safely. Here was a closed door. What were they doing? They were doing the way the word of the Lord to be shared. They were spreading the gospel. And every time, whenever you do God's work, you are a candidate to see the treasures of darkness. The very persecution is going to be the place of promotion. Amen. That's why allow the persecution to work. And here you will see verse 24. Who having received such a charge, thrust them in the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. They were not only in the prison, but they were bound that they couldn't move from that very place. There are places that God will place you that will be a tight place. But the very tight place will be an opportunity for you to see the treasure that God will bring in that place. So verse 25. Here was a place that they could have won. The very place that they could have allowed complaints and the very place things to change in their own lives. But God uses the very closed doors to open doors in your own life. When they open their mouth, the doors open. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Doors that are closed over your life, around your life, are waiting for you to open your mouth, that the very words that come out will open new doors. Because they sang, but their sang, their singing brought, somebody said, God heard their singing and started tapping. Is sweet. And you will see verse 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. Your praises are the very place that the Lord inhabits. Psalm 22, verse 3. Thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of your of Israel. Every time you praise, the prison doors are going to open. Every time you allow praise to come out, that's why praise is a weapon that you can use. Praise is the place that you will see treasures in darkness. That's why when darkness comes, learn to praise Him. Jeremiah 33 verse 7. How does God turn His captivity? He turns captivity when there is a voice of joy and gladness. 
What is the enemy after? Is after the joy that's in you. That's why your voice he wants to subdue it. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness. The voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. The voice of them that shall say, Everyone, the for the Lord is good, for his mercy, and of them that shall bring the sacrifice of grace into the house of the Lord for continuation. I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at first says the Lord. When God hears the voice of gladness, the joy of the bridegroom, of the bride, when he hears all that, he returns that captivity and restores you back. That can be seen every time, whenever you are in a, in a close situation. Praise him because Acts 16 verse 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. The very foundations that the doors are standing, God is going to shake the very foundations. He's going to take it from the roots. And God, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Praise is a weapon that you should always remember that reveals the treasures of darkness. God opens doors for you and one by one you will see there are places where God will open the door. There are places that God will not open the door but he will open another door which is bigger than your earlier door. Amen. So make sure you remember it doesn't depend on the doors to open. You need to just be, to stay on the Lord your mind to be stayed on him because if he doesn't open this door, he is preparing another bigger door for you. Amen. And you will see it in David's life. Because here you see there was a door that the very door that was closed was open. And God uses the very things was spent sin. When he opens such doors, what is he doing? And the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open. He drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Verse 28. A family here gets to be saved. There are places that you will be sent for the very purpose that more than the earthly, the eternal purposes have to be accomplished. And God will use it for his glory. Here, Paul cried to the Lord by saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. It's a testimony, verse 29. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. Verse 13. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Instead of the gospel they went to preach, the very people came and asked them, what must we do? Could you imagine? The closed doors was an open door for the gospel to be proclaimed. Verse 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Verse 32. And they speak unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. The closed doors were open doors for the word to be proclaimed. God will allow you to face closed doors so that somebody's doors will be open to the world. And if you can just wait and allow his glory to be seen, you will see the manifestation of the personality. And he took them the same hour of night and washed their stripes and was they had a baptism service in prison. And he and his he and all his house was 34. And when he had brought them into his house, he said, 
meet before them and rejoice believing in God with all his their communion. And this is very important that Paul understood the value. Second Corinthians 12, 10, 9 and 10. I think I get troubled at those words. What is Paul saying? I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in this is the mindset that I want each one of us to allow the Holy Spirit to work. Because the very trouble is the very place that you will have your treasure. <laughs> the very door that is closed, God will open the very door for His glory. And the things that you have not seen, or eyes have not seen, you will start seeing it. In persecution, in distress for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong? I, how does he find it? Verse 11. I am become a fool in glory, glory. In you have compelled me, for I ought to have commended on you. For in nothing am I behind the very cheapest, no, I mean nothing. Verse 10. 9 and 10. Verse 9. Why does he take pleasure? He said unto me, My grace is the very place that the doors have been closed are the place that you can see is grace to be sufficient. So that's why do not allow the doors to define the glory that God is going to bring into your life. My grace is sufficient for my strength is made perfect in Weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The very doors that he saw closed became open doors when he praised the Lord. So the trouble that God brings in your life are, have hidden treasures if you will allow your mouth to bring him to the glory. Praise Him in the midst of your trouble. If He is not going to open that door, God is preparing another door. Where do you see this? First Samuel chapter 29, verse 6 and 7. See the background of the story. David had a prophetic word over his life. He was going to be the next king. Things had become so bad that it seems everybody had forgotten the prophecy. <laughs> when Akish, the king, wanted to fight, he was with the Philistines, they wanted to go to fight with Saul. This was according to David, a God-given opportunity for him to take his crown from Saul. He was very excited. But do you, do you understand? When he was ready to go with the Philistines, God closed this door. Some of the opportunities, God will seemingly close it because he has a better opportunity for you. If he had taken this opportunity, this one would have been the very place that he was avoiding touching Saul he would have been forced to touch Saul because the Philistines would have forced him to kill Saul. God will always close doors because he knew he knows behind such doors there are things that you will be kept from so that he can open a bigger door that you can enter in without any struggle. Amen. This was not the door that he was supposed to enter in and it looked like a big door for him. For years he was waiting for the kingship. Akish called the same one, the king that had favored of the Philistines. He called David and said unto him, Surely as the Lord liveth, thou hast been 
upright and thy going out and thy coming in with me to the host is good in my sight. For I have not found evil in thee since the day of thy coming unto me unto this day. Nevertheless, the Lord's favors favors thee not what to continue. Wherefore now return and go in peace, that thou displease not the Lord's enemies. What does it mean? Achish trusted David, but the other lords of the Philistines didn't trust David. So what they told Achish, if you will put David with us, we might have more trouble. So send him back. And in spite of Achish saying, what did he say? I have seen you upright. How important it is to be upright in the eyes of men. How important it is to be upright in the eyes of men. When he was upright, there is a promise for all those who are standing upright. If you are standing with the Lord, Psalm 124, 112, verse 4. <coughs> <coughs> Unto me, one right, you are made. There arise light in darkness. Stand upright whenever you stand with the Lord. You are standing to see darkness come to light because there will be a light for you. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. When that door closed for David, what did he choose to do? He grumbled. He didn't allow anything else. But the very place his men came back, the very place the enemy had done something. If God had not closed that door, he would not have the opportunity to know what the enemy was doing in his very home. Sometimes God will close doors because he knows what needs to be attended first in your life. 1 Samuel 13 verse 1 And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag, that's the very place that was home to David. On the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burnt it with fire. The very door that God closed was a door that God wanted him to come in and attend to his house. There are some doors that God purposely closes so that you can attend your priorities to be in place. And that's why don't fight for open doors, but allow God to direct your steps. Because your steps are directed by the Lord. And this was, a, was the thing that he had to attend first. Because when you are in his steps, when you learn to give him thanks in everything, you will see verse 2. They have taken the woman captives. They were there. They slew not any great or small but carried away and went on their way. It was a disaster at home. But see how God turned this very door. That's why if God will open the closed door, give him thanks. If God will not open the closed door, he will open a bigger door for you. The very door that he was thinking was going to be open was closed. But the very closed door was an open door for him to return home. And when he returned home, he could see the damage that had happened. And that very damage was an opportunity that God used for him to allow God to move. That's why, thank God for closed doors. When you have closed doors in your life, God is working for a bigger door. Mm -hmm. He is turning, verse 3. 
David and his men came to the city and we all been burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive to us all. Then the people, David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Was it, is it normal to cry? Yes. But it's not normal to cry and allow yourself, allow mourning to be your garment. It doesn't need to stick to you. Because if you are allowing the mourning to stay, you cannot have what joy brings into your life wells. Isaiah 12 verse 4. Therefore, with how do you draw wells out of your belly shall flow rivers? The joy has to be there. With joy, you shall draw water out of the wells of salvation. That's why do not allow your weeping to turn into mourning. It's all right to be affected, but don't mourn over a situation that you will lose your joy because in spite of that, your joy will be able to, re to redeem your situation. If you allow the bells of salvation was for in that day, say you say, in the very day when you allow that joy to bring bells of salvation, you will say, praise the Lord and call upon his name, declare his doings among the people and make mention his name to be exalted. You will see his name glorified in this place. What did David do? Verse 6, verse Samuel 30, verse 6. He wept, but then he meditated, he ministered unto the Lord. You know, your worship is an opportunity for God to minister to you when you first minister to you. Amen. David was greatly distressed for the people's sake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself. He never focused on his That's why Philippians 4 8. Meditate, Philippians 4 8. When things go against you and doors are closed, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, things that are honest, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are good, of good report, if there be any virtue, if there is any praise, think on this, meditate on it. He made a deliberate choice. I am not going to allow what these people are thinking. I'm not going to allow the closed doors to affect me. I'm not allow, going to allow the closed people to affect me. Because the door that God opens, no man can shut it. What was the door that he was open to? Verse 7, verse 7, verse 7, verse 7. He went to that door. And David said to Abiyadah, the priest, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod, and Abiyadah brought hither the ephod to David. What was it? He wanted to hear from the Lord. That is the door that is always open. That's why when you have those doors, it was it. And David inquired, he meditated. Some in some places it's written, he meditated on the virtues of Jehovah. There are times that you need you will not see your provision, but you need to know the virtues that are in his name. 
Jehovah Jireh is my provider. You have His provision because you have a God whose name is Jehovah Jireh. You have His peace because you you have His name to be Jehovah Shalom. He cannot deny Himself. That's where he meditated on the virtues, on the names of the Lord. He made a choice to maintain his joy and his peace. If you keep your joy and your peace in such circumstances, this is what you will see. David inquired at the Lord saying, Shall I pursue after this group? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt overtake them, and without fail recover. You will, in a closed door, you will have a bigger door where you will recover all. Amen. That's why don't cry over the wrong closed doors. There are some people that are standing in front of a closed door and because you are staying too long meditating on it, you are missing what God is opening a new door and you are not seeing what God is doing on, in your life. So make sure instead of meditating verse 11, they pursued, they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. Till the time you get an open door, make sure you open doors for others. This was an Egyptian that came in between. Some of us are so focused on our problem that we have no time to take care of anybody else's problem. Until this doesn't happen, I can't take care of anything else. As a matter of fact, if you take care of somebody else, the very door that you open for somebody else, God is going to open that door for you. Whatever you have, six day, whatever you make happen for others, God will make it happen for you. This was an Egyptian, they found an Egyptian in the field, brought him to David. David was after pursuing the Amalekites. He could have just left this door for somebody else instead of for him. But if you touch other lives in the very place that you have an open closed door, you will see an open door for yourself. That's why the good Samaritan was not a good suggestion. The good Samaritan was a way of life that every one of us need to apply. Because if you apply that principle to touch lives, even when you need to attend to something else, you will see God moving in the very situation that will take care of your need. Amen. Verse, verse 12. And they gave him a piece of cake and fix of clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. For he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights. Here was a man who was completely drained off. I've, I've seen ministry. If you can take care of the ones that are truly in need, that is true ministry. Your ministry begins where your need, where the needs of the people can be taken care of. And when you learn to take care of the very needs, your ministry needs are all met. Over and above. Because your need is not your priority but the needs of your people. David made a choice and seek the answer was the David said unto him, To whom belongs thou, and whence thou art? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite, and my master left me because three days ago I fell sick. This was a servant of the Amalekites. The very person that gave the direction for David to go where the Amalekites were. If he had missed this door, he would not have been able to enter this whole door. That's why your very door 
is dependent on the very doors that open, that you open. If you bypass some lives, you have missed the very opportunity to touch the very life that God is going to touch in you. Verse 14. What was the revelation? We made an invasion upon the south of the Jerites and upon the coast which belong to Judah and upon the south of and we burnt Ziklag with fire. What was the revelation? This was in the same crowd that came against David's house. 15. Light in darkness. This was the place. Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this company. What was, what was the condition? You're a free man. Now, if I open this door for you, he was going to open the door for David to receive and recover all. Oh. Verse 16. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad on all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. What were the spoils? They were not only the spoils of David, they were the spoils of every place that they had invaded. The Philistines. And everything that they had collected, they were there waiting for David to come and recover all. Verse 17. David smote them from twilight even until the evening of the next day, and there escaped not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. Verse 18. David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. If God did not close that door, he would not have had this door open. He could have had that battle, and in, instead, he could have killed Saul and wasted everything that the enemy had stolen on the other side. Whenever God protects you, He will close that door. He will close the door because He is working on another thing. And you need to be patiently praising and thanking Him. Because some doors He will break open. Some doors He will not break it open because a bigger door is waiting for you. Yes. 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 And here was 19. And there was nothing lacking of them, neither small nor great, neither sons. They had taken to the David recovered. All was 20. All the flocks, all the herds, they drave before the people those cattle and said, This is David's spoil. You will not only have what belongs to you, but you will have everything else. That the enemy has stolen to be restored into your life. So some doors God will open, some doors He will close, so that you can have the treasures of darkness. God never allows you to enter and receive nothing but the very thing that He has prepared for you. You have seen Paul, you have seen David, Jesus. Luke 22, verse 39. How did Jesus face the cross to the cross? <coughs> he came out and went as he would to the Mount of Olives and his disciples also followed him. Verse 14. When he was at the place, he said unto Whenever you are at a close place, pray that you enter not into that vision. Because 
there will always be for the for you uh, temptation for the flesh to grumble. For the flesh to rationalize that this can be changed one way or the other. That's why your brain will put the place, the flesh in its place. Why, why did Peter react it? Because he could not tarry for a while. When you have a closed door, you praise him and you spend time in prayer. Because God is working while you are praying. And the very door, verse 41. He was withdrawn from them about a stone cast and kneeled down and prayed. What was his prayer? Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I'm not pushing this door. If you have closed this door, I know you're working something out. This very door was the door that God opened for the resurrection. Everyone today enters salvation through this door. What seems to be a closed door for you is an open door that God is working on. And if you just learn to wait, to praise Him and to pray, you will see God working in the midst of the closed doors. Do not allow your flesh to work when things are not working. When things are not happening, this is your opportunity to reveal what God has placed in your spirit. Amen. To praise Him at all times. Amen. Always remember Psalm 13 verse 5. In His favor is, weeping may endure for a night when joy comes in the morning. David understood it. He wept for the night, but joy came in the morning. <coughs> you may emotionally be down for some doors that are not open. But make sure in the morning you rise up because His mercies are new every morning. Don't bring yesterday's thing today because His grace is for the day. You will always see <coughs> that your needs are supplied for the day. Do not worry about tomorrow. Do not allow yesterday's pain to be today's problem. But allow God to allow His peace. Romans 15 verse 30. When you have peace and joy in believing, you will always see doors open in your life. Romans 15 30. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy. Is God always willing to fill you? Yes. God is not limited, but the limits are for everyone who comes to God. God will match you according to how much you want it to. That's why if you ask for joy, if you have asked for peace, you will receive it according to the measure that you want to fill. If it's a handful, you will receive a handful. The more you want it, the more you can have it. Because God will always match it according to your desire. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Your key is in believing. Whenever the doors are closed, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Whenever you have hope, you can stand against any. And hope make it not. Romans 5 5. Hope make it not. Hope 
will ever be ashamed. If you have hope, you will not be put to shame. Allow, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Hope is always going to open a new door for you. That's why in hope, Romans 4, verse 20. I know you're getting scriptures after scriptures, but. How did Abraham handle the delay? Close doors. He staggered not at the promises, at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Whenever you learn to give Him the glory, you will see, verse 21. You will be fully persuaded. The moment you open your mouth, you will see your very praises are the place that you are going to get persuaded that the promise is coming to pass. Amen. How did David encourage himself? He encouraged himself because nobody was there to encourage him. There are seasons that God will allow nobody else but you to encourage yourself. And when you are ready to encourage yourself, you are ready to receive the crown. Before 14 hours, David was the king. When you can discipline yourself, you are ready to be promoted. When you can learn to praise when nobody else is praising, you are ready for promotion. That's why some of you, the props God will allow to be taken out of your life. For a season, I have allowed somebody to come to be a prop for you, but nobody will be the foundation because God alone is the foundation. First Corinthians 3.11 there is no other foundation that any man can lay but the Lord. For other foundation can no man lay but than that that is laid, which is your foundations will be checked. That's why he will prove you to promote you. But in the midst of the proving, let not the problem come from your mouth, but the praises come from. That's why 1 Thessalonians 5.17 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. Be in an attitude of prayer because that will always be How do you stay with this pray without ceasing? Verse 18 In open doors give thanks. Is that it? In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. When you are settled that God is the law of your life, Jesus is the law of your life. When some doors will close, God is directing you to a new door. And that door is much bigger and better than the door that you were there before. That's why don't cry over the closed doors, but praise Him when you are at the closed door for new doors. I just know that your destiny for me is greater than anything that can come in between. And I know that the dream that God has for me will come to pass. Doors are only opportunities for you to move from one to the other. And God will always direct His people. He will close one door so that He can open another door for you. And there are some places where He will open those closed doors. There are some places where He will direct you to move from that door to another new door. 
don't get stuck up for some doors are a blessing when they are closed. I thank God for the closed doors because I don't know today where I will be at that doors will open. Yes. In March I was supposed to, I was ministering in a church and that door closed. I actually felt I was very happy. About two and a half years, three years I was there. Everybody was everything was doing so well. But what happened? God knew that this was the door he wanted to open someday. And I couldn't have jumped. The door that he closed then was an opportunity and I understood it then. But I understand it today. That's why today I learned to praise him for every closed door. Before long, I saw another door closing and I said, thank God, I know these are doors that God allows because if I don't have a closed door, I will not see an open door. So thank God in everything, in all situations, give Him thanks. Amen. There are some jobs that God will not want you to step in, however good the pay may be. Why? Because he will not allow you to touch some things of the flesh. And it may not be that only. There may could be any more things, many more things. So you may be seeing the price tag on that door. But God is seeing his praises to come from your life more than the price tag. So when he closes any door, he's got a bigger door for you. And you learn to wait and pray unto the Lord. He is the Lord of your life. If He is not Lord of all, He is not Lord at all. Don't give Him compartments. Give Him the whole and you will see when you are in the center of His will. God will turn everything around because the doors that He opens, no man can close. You will never miss an opportunity. As a matter of fact, when the doors close, it was an obstacle for you because some obstacles He will avoid, He will stop you from so that you will enter through the door of opportunity. Some things that you think today are stumbling blocks and he will make it to be a stepping stone for you. Amen. Every trial that you are passing through is only a testimony if you will allow his praise to come through. That's why Revelation 3.8, this is the property word. Before we close, Revelation 3.8, this is the word that I believe I release over every one of you. Even those that are watching. I know thy works, behold, I have set before you an open door. An open door. I have prepared a door that is bigger than the closed door that you've been crying about. And the things that you've been meditating yesterday, no man shall shut, shut it, for thou hast a little strength, but has kept my word. What is the word? What is the word? In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Give thanks. In everything, this is the word. You have kept my word. I, you will praise it in the midst of the closed door. Amen. Like Paul, you will in midnight hour. I will praise him when things are not working. Even if I'm stuck in my place, my feet are stuck. They are bound, I will allow this praise to come forth. Amen. Because whether the foundations are going to be shaken, I am standing on a foundation that can never be shaken. Amen. Amen. And God will always make me to receive what I, He has promised me. What I have not seen, I will see. 
Your ears have not heard, I will hear. I want each one of us to lift up our hands. Let's rise up. Repeat after me, and I have declared this prophetic word over every person, even those that are watching on the YouTube. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I receive this word. I receive this word. And I keep it. And I keep it in my heart. In my heart. That I may not sin against you. That I may not sin against you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. As I enter. As I enter. Into my new season. Into my new season. I thank you. I thank you for the close doors. Close doors. And I know. I know that you will open the doors. That you will open the doors which no man can shut. Which no man can shut. In the midst. In the midst. I choose. I choose to give you praise. Give you praise. To give you thanks. Give you thanks. And to praise you. And to praise you with joy. With joy and peace. And peace. No more mourning. No more mourning. But every morning. Every morning, I receive, I receive your mercies that are new every morning. I thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you thanks. Because I know my Redeemer lives. I can face tomorrow. From strength to strength. From glory to glory. And from faith to faith. I choose to give you thanks. To lift up your praise and to allow your light to shine. For I will see and have treasures of darkness. I will recover all. As David, I have the keys of David. And I thank you with the with the spoils. The that the enemy has stolen, the enemy has stolen. I, will receive I will receive my double portion, my double portion of, blessing. of blessing in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen lift up your hands Lord I just seal every person everyone that is watching I seal it with your precious blood even as I stretch forth these hands every hand that is over this house that is the hands of those that are watching Lord they will have an open door which they will enter yes. and I release upon them the prophetic word Lord that they will have treasures no darkness yes. or in every situation you will make the proper places to be straight yeah. all the very things that have come against them Genesis 15 verse 20 will be the very word that they will see what the enemy has desired for evil you will turn it for their good Amen. Lord we bless you and we thank you for when you have spoken God, it is already established. God, you are not a man that will lie. What you have spoken, you have also done it. And we thank you, Lord. We bring it back to your ears. For you said, whatever you will speak, I will do it. Lord, we speak your praises. That today itself, we will enter the very places of darkness. And we will possess the gates of the enemy. In Jesus' name we all say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated.